I'm Mickey Colton. And I'm Chad Dillon. And this is the Utica Rally, Rally Cross Series. Series. My July for your third event of the season here in Blackpool, England. Number three, Soho! Yep, I'm so ready. Is, yep, this is the third race of the season, and we are here in England back again. Hello, Governor! Now, we came here last year, and it was a very impressive facility. It had, you know, the loop-de-loop -loop in the middle, which they called the Blackpool Roundabout. Oh, That's yeah, yeah. It was very intense. I remember last year... Uh, Seth Cole was like, yeah, woo! And he was yeah, like, so he's, he's going to be back again this year, so that should be fun. And also, they have really revamped this entire yeah. area. They have uh, built a huge resort here. And if you thought the one in Elkhorn Pike was impressive, just just wait till you get a look at this one. It's so huge. It's an absolutely amazing facility. I know. It was very nice to stay in it uh, last night. Uh, but here's uh, here's our uh, starting lineup here. We got Stephen Carter first up to bat, followed by Seth Cole. Adam Darn, Darn, Darn Lab. <laughs> Adam oh, Darn. Darn, Darn Lab. Um, is there any names here that stand out to you today? Uh, another one is the rookie Mason Powers. We'll see if he can really keep his consistency forward. Um, uh, another person is Robert Piet. I want to see if he's going to have a big day today. I'm hoping that would be really cool. William Duncan also had a good run last week. He may be able to follow it up today. Yeah. Nathan Minazuki, this is his home track, so... He's one of the few drivers that actually will get to go to their home track. Uh, another driver here I want to mention is Nick Pericles, coming off his first uh, Utica Rally Cross Series win. Uh, let's see if that momentum carries forward. Let's now count out the Black Mamba, Matt Evans. We'll have to see if he can yeah, turn after, around his... Uh, yeah, after last, week, uh, last mm -hmm. time's terrible run. But we meet our first competitor on track. It is the number 12 of Stephen Carter for Allen Racing. Now, we start off here at the very top of this structure. And look, this is all resort. I know, and it was beautiful. Look at the stories. Look at all the windows. And all these people coming from their hotel rooms are like, wow, look at this race event. And it extends over to here. This is a huge facility. Now, this is the part that's going to trick up a lot of drivers. you got to hit it at the right angle. And, oh, but he makes it. The man that's never DNF'd is somehow able to get himself off the roll. Yeah, good job by Steven Carter. Not sure how much of that was luck, how much of that was driving ability, but we know Carter has the skill. Yeah, that was almost that, out of that was so close from breaking this his record. This part is different here. They've added this wavy bridge here, which will really throw off these drivers going yeah, over Yeah, exactly. It, along with this area over here. Yeah, a lot of this place is new. Now, this next last turn coming up here is really going to trick up a lot of drivers because you got to jump, but you have to go around the like around it, the loop, and oh! oh no, he's not going to no. hit the racetrack. Now, I do want to point out, he does not have to hit that checkpoint, but I think he's thinking he has to. Oh no, He's Steve already gone through it. I know, Stephen Carter's scattering. Where's he, where does he, he think he's going? He's trying to find a way back on the racetrack, which I would say this track is one of the most difficult since a lot of it's, you know, enclosed. I, exactly, but I think he might finally realize he doesn't need to get that last checkpoint, and he does. Yeah, the, the crew chief is uh, shouting in his ear to get to the finish line. Oh! <laughs> into the bay. But he's going to cross the line with a 123.91. Not a good start for the day. But he does get that bonus point, though. You gotta forget, you can't forget that. Yep, he will get a bonus point to help him along. Here is Seth Cole, the stuntman, as he's going to go over his favorite Whee! roundabout. Whee! He's just cheering in his little seat there. Oh, Seth Cole's wall. probably happy that he went up early so he get to, uh, gets to do that early on. But not going to be the best starting position for Whoa! the Yuma winner. Whoa! Seth Cole by the day. Oh, he does it somehow, Seth Cole. Oh, no, but look, he's he's got two wheels stuck off there. He Man, will get back on, yeah, though. Yeah, he will. Man, first two runs today, not very pretty, I can tell you that much. Uh, he does have a chance to beat uh, Stephen Carter here if he can, you know, pick up the pace a bit. But, uh, yeah, not a good start for these guys. Uh, Seth Cole, who won in Yuma. Uh, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to take the crown today. Well, you know what? Even though you getting that one win under your belt, I mean, it shows you. If, as long as you can be... Top, you know, consistent and get top ten for the rest of the season. You're going to be in the top, in the top of the pack when it comes to the championship run. Mm -hmm. And with Seth Cole, that win was oh, because he's been and of course, oh, of course, yeah, with style. Yes, absolutely with style. Now they're going to count Cole. the checkpoint. He kind of went right over it, but well, remember, he already went through that checkpoint he when he did. went through the roundabout. Yes, but a 111.83 for Seth Cole beating uh, Stephen Carter. Next. Next up, we have a name that you had trouble with, uh, Adam Dunlap. Oh, darn lap. Oh, <laughs> darn. Yeah, well, Adam no, no, Dunlap. No, I would like to point something out there. Adam Dunlap being the championship winner last season, not having a good start so far in the first two events. Yeah, last weekend was a big disappointment for him in Elkhorn Pike. He yeah. ended up wrecking that car coming off and, the pike. In Yuma, he was subpar. He didn't do as well as he probably wanted to. But so far, a clean run, better than the first two guys up the bat. Oh, a little turning problem there, hitting mm -hmm. off the back, the, the side wall. Yeah, with Adam, I think it's just, you know, he's with a new team, his cell phone. 
Mm-hmm. Um, he's tried owning a team multiple times, and most of them have folded and failed. So well, yeah. he's trying to get this off the ground. So well, this thing is, is that this is the only series he runs. I mean, this is this is what he does, and this is his favorite event. I mean, when it, being a championship, you got a, you got the funding now to start a team, and it's probably a lot of pressure on him. But not a bad time, a 57-63, and a, finishing with a little bit of a flip there. Next up, we have Carson Bechtel in car number nine for Maple Leaf Motorsports, the Canadian. Not having a good season for this young rookie. Yeah, a lot of tough luck for him. I mean, that's what you see from these new drivers. Usually they're either shining stars or they're just in the dust. And, you know, so far it's been a love, rough, tough break. But, you know, there's still a long season ahead of us. we still got seven more races to go, including this one. Now, yeah. not bad. A little bit of a dud on, off the sidewall, but he did not flip over. And I think that might help him in the long run. Yeah, and um, he did make some contact with the wall on the roundabout there, so we'll have to see what he can pull out from this run. And, you know, I think it's especially heartbreaking for him this season because he, um, he's one of the few drivers that gets a chance to go to a home track. He, oh, in Canada, oh, oh, but he makes the flip over and barely gets himself back on his front you know, four Carson wheels. Bechtel, all three of the events he's participated in so far have been, you know, just barely hanging on, so yeah, I'm te- not sure what this team is doing a, a with lot, the car. I know, exactly. A lot of te- Oh, but you know what? A lot of these things he's happening, it's not the car, it's, it's him. You know, a lot of these things are just they're just minor mistakes that really can downfall your entire run and just flip the car around. I know. And I, I was saying before we had the issue, uh, he struggled last week in Canada, which that is his home country, and he disappointed in front of the home crowd. He's going to struggle here today. A 118.02. That does not beat Seth Cole, who had problems. Exactly. Next up is Tyler Benoit from Benoit Motorsports. Now, Benoit hoping to get a good run today. I mean, last week was not very pretty, along with many of the veterans like Matt Evans, Adam Dunlap. Not a very pretty run from last week. No, a lot of them really struggled last week, and Nick Pericles was able to take advantage of it. Really, the only veteran that really did well was William Duncan, which is surprising because yeah. he had a average finish of last place at that racetrack. Exactly. Um, I do want to point out uh, Tyler Benoit here because, you know, he's one of the top drivers in the sport. He does well at this racetrack. We have to see if, you know, he can pick it up. Well, Benoit's known for having really good starts, but then something happens right near the end. I mean, that's usually what his thing, especially at Alcorn. He was about to beat the time, but then he just DNF right at the end. You know, I do want to point out an interesting bit of trivia that I just got from my production manager. Um, The driver who won this race last year, Dylan Young, is not here this week. At a 57-25, getting to the top of the standings. Beating out his ex-teammate, Adam Dunlap. Next up is Chris Aurelio. What were you saying there? Um, what I was saying is that Dylan Young's not here, so all of these drivers are competing to be get their first win at this racetrack. Exactly. So we're not going to have a repeat winner. So thank, thank you, uh, Steve, for the information. Oh, yeah. Th- thanks, Steve. No, no matter. <laughs> <laughs> but, he actually said nothing. Chad just decided, you know. you know. The <laughs> I want to give him a personality, man. I mean, that's what I want to do. But Chris Steve Arrelli- has plenty of personality. You saw him at the office party. Oh, yeah. He was upside down. He had that lampshade over his right, head. Steve. Oh, no. Chris Aurelio Ooh. almost falling off the bridge there. But Chris Aurelio not having a bad run so far. Yeah, did well in Yuma. Struggled a little bit in Elkhorn. But, uh. Oh! Uh-oh. Riding on the very edge of control is Chris Aurelio, but he is he's known for be, having a lot of, you know, great runs being acted out, just, you know, pushing the limits of the you know, race. Being, being one of those, he's, you know, being a veteran, a se- you know, from season one champion, a 59-99, not a bad time for Chris Aurelio, putting him in third place. But, you know, Chris Aurelio really has the veteranship. But next up is Mason Powers, the rookie, coming off a great first two races so far. Top five, both of them. I am really impressed with this young man. Mason Powers has really shown through out of the rookie classes here. I think he can be one of the competitors for Rookie of the Year. Wow. Him and Dylan Thoreau are both really good as he really did the half pipe well. Exactly. He really got his front end two wheels to pop around and snap back into the track. Really having a lot of momentum off the jump. Because if the more momentum you got off the jump, the smoother you hit that decline coming off of it. Now he's got a lot of speed coming up into these last few turns. Yep, and he was able to manage the wavy bridge just fine. Um, a lot of people have been calling it the dragon back because of how how you know. It yeah, exactly. Contours you like have that. to hit it right. And wow, smoothly through the heart. The one of the weirdest parts about this track. Now all he has to do is just drive through the finish, and he makes it with a 56-29. That is going to be the top time. As now Alex DeMarco in car number one for Performance Motorsports is on racetrack. Now Alex DeMarco, <laughs> another one of those drivers, really struggled this season. So he's got to look to turn it around. Um, his only really 
decent run came from in his debut at Budva last year. Exactly. He second. You know, but you know, he's still one of those people that whoa, whoa. he manages to flip himself over. Somehow everyone seems to flip their car back over. It seems like this the way you gotta do it. Yeah, it seems like uh, the way they roll down there, you know, gets them perfectly to land on their wheels. Yeah, it's not like it's even bad. I mean they just it just slows you down a bit. Oh, oh! He's not gonna get out of his wheels here as he's upside down. Oh wait, he... he's trying. He's slowly getting over the cameraman for some reason flips around. <laughs> You know, like if these drones, they log into the race car when they get inverted, they yeah. sometimes get confused, but... Oh, he's trying. He's trying his heart out. He knows if he can try and flip now, the car over. This is very difficult for a driver because you're trying to flip this car back over, but your head is literally inches away from the ground. Also, you're upside down, so all the blood's rushing to your head, so you don't really think very clearly, and you're just in pressure Look, he's mode. He's still trying, and I'm not sure what he's going for. I think he's trying to maybe going to try and prop himself up on yeah. the. Oh wait, the he's getting sign. some speed. He's getting some speed. Can he do it? Let's see. Oh, no, it's gonna get stuck. That is a DNF for Alex DeMarco. And first so far, DNF. Yeah, yeah, only so far the only DNF thus far is now Robert Piet, the Flying Dutchman, hopes to fly the victory lane today. <laughs> That's not that's not Dutch at all. <laughs> <laughs> Though it sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rob's gonna be angry. <laughs> That'd be one of the most annoying laughs I think if someone went to a party. <laughs> no, the most annoying la laugh is <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> But Robert Piet actually having a really decent run so far in the middle of the beginning half of this track. Robert Piet, the NASCAR legend, um, just started an endurance racing series and also a knockout series. So basically the two opposite ends of the spectrum. Uh, real real quality businessman, Robert Piet. Yeah, I would, like to, see, I would like to see a bringing in a knockout version of Rallycross. Yeah, that could be interesting. Yeah, I think Who be, knows? Hey, maybe in the future, maybe I'll talk to Robert Piet, because he seems to be the man of the new ideas. Yeah, this guy, he's really thinking, and it shows on the racetrack. He's yeah, had a great wow. effort so far. 59.62, that will be a top five run for Robert Piet. So good job for him after, you know, a DNF in Yuma hurt his points a bit. Next up, it's William Duncan, the Thunder. <laughs> now, last weekend, he really, uh, you know, shook the crowd when they took second place at Elkhorn Pike. I mean, he made the crowd really roar. I mean, with the thunder and the, the, the just the fierceness. If only the lightning did good that oh. weekend. And, uh, not going to be the best ah. off that, but it could have been worse. It could have been uh, similar to you know what's happened to Seth Cole. So, yeah, exactly. We'll see what uh, Duncan can do. I'm not sure if this is going to go for a top time though. You know, it, it's really tough. I mean, it's the only way you're, the way to get the best run of this place is to really handle that wall correctly. I mean, a lot of people are handling the loop just fine. It's the key parts is the main wall, and then this this section right here. When you get to that that jump around the loop, it can throw off your entire run if you just clip a little bit. Another thing you have to worry about is when you get off the roundabout, you have to worry about that wall there. A lot of drivers have made some contact with that. Yeah. It's really thrown off their momentum. But William Duncan, a 101.97, not going to make the top five, but not a bad run nonetheless. Yeah, it's going to be a little lower, but we'll have to see how he seeds into it. No. Next up. Nick Pericles, car number 16 for Red Viper Racing, last week's winner. Let's see if he can carry that momentum into this race. Mm, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? Sometimes you're going to be a one-time winner or you're going to be Mr. Consistency. And right now, if you can hit this wall right, not a bad swing around. Interesting his... pirouette from yeah, the 16 car. Exactly. You know, he's able to flip those two front tires around, a lot like Mason Powers did. He snapped back onto the track. He did slow him down off the loop a little bit, but so far, not a bad start. Yeah, a little reckless here, but Pericles has had a great season so far. A very good run in, in Yuma, Arizona, where yeah, he was able to finish exactly. in the top five, winning it in Elkhorn Pike. So now we'll have to see what happens in Blackpool as, you know, he bobbled a little bit near the beginning, but the rest of his oh, run's been relatively solid. Very smooth. Does not hit the checkpoint there, so he's able to kit it off smoothly. He's going to the last final turn here. Does he do it? Yes, he will, if he's going to cross the line. 58-11. Uh, yes, so next up is the hometown hero is Nathan Manzuki. Well, I'm not sure hometown. I don't think he's from Blackpool per se, but he is the only English driver in the field. Exactly, and now we're hoping we can get a good run out of him. So far, he's he's been okay. I mean, he, last week, I, I think he did pretty well. Uh, he, yeah, he did okay. Yeah, I mean, it's been an okay season for Minnesota. He's been near the middle of the field. It's been a rookie season. I mean, you got to get your you got to get your feet wet a little bit. You got to get used to the series. But he's able to hit that jump very, very nicely, very, very smooth. Oh, this is tracking well. well have to, uh, this could compete for a top five time, as uh, you know, Minnesota, you know, noted for his stock car racing, but it hasn't really been you know 
amazing at Wow, him. look at the this speed coming off the dirt jump right there. Propelled himself, really snapped back onto the track. Hits it perfectly through the checkpoint, coming into the final stretch here. Nathan Mizuzuki. This could be close. Here we What's go. What's he going to get? It's a 55-43, and that's going to be top of the charts for Nathan Mizuzuki. Wow. There's still some cars to go, though, so... Mizuki is not safe yet. It's Colin Bartel in car number seven on racetrack. He's had a rough go of it this year. Exactly. You know, it would have been funny if he was the 12th man up. That would be pretty funny, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would have been. <laughs> but, uh, no, he's the 13th guy on track. Just missed yep. it. <laughs> But Colin Bartel, yeah, last he, he is a multi-winner, though, but he just never can get it done with the consistency. We say this all the time. Mm -hmm. He was like that in Utica Home Track Series, too. He was able to win that uh, the Megville Bull Run. and had some good runs at other tracks, but other tracks, he would just, you know, really slump off. So yep. Bartel, I mean, really having a hard time keeping it consistent on the racetrack. Yeah, exactly. And it is hard. Rallycross is a really hard track because it's not like you're doing the same thing like a lot of, you know, the Utica Home Track Series. A lot of the tracks, you know, the same thing. Rallycross, every track is completely different. There's a new challenge awaiting for you, and you can't and, really Oh, no! For, oh, he's going to go off track, but wait a second. Remember, they've learned from Stephen Carter's mistake. He now knows he can go right under here and get to the line. That he is will... the fun part about Rallycross, is that <laughs> the learning throughout the race. You don't know before you go, and it's the favorite part. But a 106.19, not a good time for Colin Bartel. No, that's going to be pretty low on the board. Next up is uh, Joseph Vanesto from Top Notch Racing. Now, Joseph Vanesto having one win underneath his belt. So far, being Joseph Vanesto, middle of the pack, what do you see from him today? You think he's going to be able to get a good run? Well, Joseph Vanesto is kind of an interesting driver. Similar to Colin Oh, Martel, that's the very... best right off the wall there. Yeah, that was pretty good. As, uh, you know, Onesto, um, he can, he's a, he's a top-notch racer. I mean, as he says in his team name. <laughs> exactly. But sometimes he gets some bad luck and... You know, in Utica Home Track Series, he's had issues with qualifying. Um, here he's had some issues with, you know, some kind of embarrassing yeah. DNFs, like, you know, a dead man's curve in last week at Elkhorn. Yeah. But this is tracking really well, similar to Nathan Minazuki. Could he usurp the, main the top spot? Ooh, a little slow, but able to snap back on. Coming up time. Now, he's coming off the final bend here. Can he beat Nathan Minazuki? To the line. 55-78. Oh. Just going to miss it. But second place is great for Joseph Vanesto, who, you know, has not had the best season thus far. Yes, next up is Tyler Kalesa. Now, Tyler Kalesa, being the one of the men that create these cars, has been middle of the pack. We haven't seen a really big race for him yet. We haven't seen a top five finish from the guy. Hopefully today we can see something happen. Yeah, Tyler Kalesa, very interesting individual. Uh, spent a lot of time in Australia as an alligator farmer. Ended up coming over to motorsports because he thought this would be more interesting. Well, maybe his past will come back to you know snap back at him, you know what I'm saying, like mm -hmm. an alligator. But, you know... I was trying to go somewhere with that joke, just to not work the way I wanted to. <laughs> I just to. got the, the you know, snapbacks in my head. And <laughs> That's what I was trying to go now with. Now he just looks like a jerk. <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, Tyler Clutch having a very good run so far. Not a lot of problems. Not a lot of, just a nice, clean run. Tyler Colessa, otherwise known as Chico, as he likes to be called. Yeah. Coming to the line, this is looking pretty good. A 56.75. That will be a top five for him. And now it's time for, we saw the thunder, here comes the lightning. Alex Hawkins in car number 19, Barney's Revenge. Barney's Revenge. Alex Hawkins. Will he make it in Blackpool? Who knows? You know, this is one of the few drivers that both has a nickname for themselves and for their race car. Yeah, <laughs> so, I know. So Alex Hawkins gets the real treatment here. But Alex Hawkins has been pretty, you know... Lackluster this year. I, have, I, won't, I don't want to say it's been a bad season for him, but I mean it hasn't been anything overly impressive. Well, you know that has, the, I, we we always talk about it with the with the consistency of of the rally cross. It's just it's not. It is not this this series is not easy. People no. that can come into it, it's it's not like it's you're gonna be like a natural like Mason Powers. I mean like, who knew that this guy would be such a natural at this 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 series? But. It's tough, especially when you haven't done anything like this before. Yeah. It's a new experience. Alex but, Hawkins is more noted for ooh. short track racing, which this is anything but. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is twists and turns, and it's just crazy. He crossed the line with a 101.66. This is going to seat him right next to you know, the Thunder, William Duncan. Yeah, so. exactly. Now, now, next up is the Black Mamba. Now, Matt Evans. Yeah, so yeah. far, this, the Black Mamba is more like a gardener snake this year. It's not been that good for him, but... Hey, this is a great opportunity for him hey, to, well, you, know, you know, bite what? back. Yeah. What kind of pool does Black Mamba buy? What? What kind of pool <laughs> does Black Mamba buy? Uh, does he buy one of those Austin Ogo jacuzzis? Oh, uh, Blackpool, silly. It means he's going to win with Blackpool, of course. <laughs> uh, we're right on the same page. <laughs> 
But uh, Matt Evans, an exceptional race car driver, winning his driver in this series, winning his driver in the Utica Home Track Series. Yep. He's done it oh, all. Oh! oh. <laughs> Somehow gets a nice grind. If we were in playing Tony Hawk, he would get probably about 300 points. Yeah, that, that could have been a, a high score run in Tony Hawk. Yeah, but well, <laughs> it's not. This is not that. This is <laughs> professional race car driving. But as he crosses the line at 5677, that's going to be fifth place overall. Not a bad run for him. Just misses Tyler Kolesa's time. His old, his old business Knocking partner. off Tyler Benoit, though, from the top five. I mean, this is a battle, though. That's going to be a conversation in the in the pits area. Exactly. Now, Michael Aurelio really slowing himself down off the sidewall. I don't know if that was bad or good because it was able to straighten himself out in the, 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 the crazy turns. Mm -hmm. Michael Aurelio had such a good run in Yuma, but then last week took a huge turn for the worse as, one, he missed a jump. At the beginning, had the double, yeah, double back. Exactly. And then he ends up wrecking in the in the Elkhorn Pike section of the course. So <laughs> yeah, and yeah. this isn't looking that good either. Well, you know what? It's that it's not that bad actually. I mean, he's got a lot of speed. He was able to hit the wall j just fine. He didn't flip himself. Ooh, yeah, almost. Yeah, yeah, almost off the track. But hey, he was able to get recovered relatively quickly. Let's see. We're going over the last section of the course. Here we what go. What can Michael Aurelio do? He needs some redemption after last week's failure. And it's a 57-62, not a top five, but that is a good time for him. Yeah, putting him in seventh place so far right now. Now, Dylan Thoreau. Mm -hmm. He's going to, you know, go around this racetrack very thoroughly. Very thorough. Mm -hmm. Very, very thorough. You know, you got to be... You gotta be smart. You gotta be pinpoint on every turn. So and that is him. He is an exceptional race car driver, as Whoa! we've seen this season. And oh, oh, keeps it going. Oh, that's the thing. He looks like he's gonna get a lot of speed off it, and then the whole car just flips over. You know, it it must be really frustrating for the, a lot of these drivers. You know, they look at all the tape, they watch everyone all day, they think they got it right, but it it still you know, flips. That jump, that jump kind of reminds me of the of the hole in the wall at, at Lithuania yeah. from last year. They, they made a bid this year, but we're not going back Whoa. to that track this year. But it was always kind of like, you know, like, a, oh, I need to hit it just right. Yeah, you yeah. know, that's what it was. And a lot of these things, you can look at the tape over and over again, but it all comes down to the skill of your driving, you know. But Dylan Thoreau coming to the line with a 58. Whoa! Whoa Holy shit! By Dylan Thoreau. Oh, that made me so <laughs> Sorry. Oh, my God. I'm not going to make the top five, but, hey, that was pretty good. Our last car up for today, Matt Duell. Can he take the top spot? Now, Matt Duell has some wins under his belt. He is good at racetracks in this matter. He did well in uh, Seoul, South Korea. He's done well in other places as well. Let's see what he can do. I, I believe Matt Duell is the last person in points right now. Matt Duell is not doing yeah, so he, hot. Him and Carson Bechtel yeah. and Alex DeMarco have all been kind of back there battling it out for that last place position. Oh, it, oh no, my he god! He flew off the dragon back, oh. and now he's stuck. This isn't even the racetrack. This is parking. And they've <laughs> actually shut off the main gate over there, so he can't double back. <laughs> Man, this is not looking good. So I don't know how he's going to get back on the racetrack here. Uh, he looks a, a little dazed. Is... He looked, I think he's just panicking, you know. He probably came in today like, we got to get this season back around. You know, we had such a good season last year. We got we got turning around and then this happens, you know. It it, it just takes a huge hit on your reputation. I mean, he was known as the door the not the door course the dark horse. <laughs> you know what? You can't let it go, <laughs> can you? <laughs> he Poor was... guy, he's having a rough season. You have to keep calling him a dork <laughs> and a dorky horse. As a matter of fact, but hey, he knows where he's going here. He knows what he wants to do. He's heading back all the way over the here. Gonna try and build up some. I don't think this will beat Nathan Minazuki. So Nathan Minazuki will be able to get the win at his home track, but we'll have to see if Matt Duell can finish this. Hold on, he might be able to hit a rewind button somehow and just retry. Yeah, I mean, only one car is DNF'd, and that's Alex DeMarco, and he just beat him right here. So actually, even if he wrecked over there, yeah, it wouldn't have mattered. As long as he finishes, he's not going to get last place. Yes. I'm that's amazing. We've never had. We've almost had a no DNF race. Oh, oh he's off no! the track again. It's okay though. He missed. The, he already made the checkpoint. I'm right. I'm correct. Right. No. Yeah, he has to go. But wait, there is a ramp there, similar to the one over there. He might be able to get back on. So he has to hit that oh, tiny checkpoint. Here we oh go. man, this is an awful run for a duel. 
he was hoping for this season to get turned around, but it looks like it's a he's... a little reminiscent of the Adam Dunlap run that really changed his you career know, they, around. They should hire Matt Duell to give the tour of the facility, because he knows his way around it. Yeah, like he's been he like... He visited every part of it. He's like, you got trapped there? Well, you go over here. But... 22688 as our drone actually went out there. He yeah. ran out of footage. Nathan Minazuki gets his first career win. Not only is this his first career win, he gets it at his home track. So I know. Great job the the for crowd is going nuts. His family's proud. They're really, really, really happy for him today. Joseph Vanesco, a great run in second place, followed by Mason Powers with a great run. <laughs> yeah. Tyler Kalesa and Matt Evans doing a great job running at your top five. Same with Tyler Benoit. Did a good job. Not a bad finish for him. Michael Aurelio, Adam Dunlap. This is the top ten we were looking to see last week. Yep, uh, Nick Pericles and Dylan Thoreau running out the top ten. Robert Piet in 11th place, followed by Chris Aurelio, Alex Hawkins, and William Duncan. So Lightning and Thunder next to each other once again. <laughs> Colin Bartell rounds out your top 15. And we got the bottom five. Seth Cole, Carson Bechtel, Stephen Carter, Matt Doolin, Alex DeMarco, the Un only man to DNF today. Unfortunately, familiar faces down there with Bechtel, Duell, and DeMarco. Honestly, you probably, Matt Duell probably would have rather DNF to just, um, just get rid of all the confusion. Mm -hmm. But our points leader, Mason Powers, the rookie, with 55, followed by Nick Pericles. Only four points back, though, yeah. so he still can catch up. Dylan Thoreau, another rookie, third place in points, followed by Seth Cole and William Duncan. Despite, you know, a lackluster yeah. finish this time, he's going to pick up the top five spot. Also, you got the, another rookie, Tyler Kulesa. Nathan Mizuki with the win, really b b bumped him up. Todd Benoit, Chris Aurelio, and Mike Aurelio, the brothers, could fall out your top ten. Don't count them out yet, folks. It's early in the season. Yes. So they can double back. Then we have the bottom half of the points. Stephen Carter in 11th place. Joseph Vanesto picks up a couple points this weekend. Adam Dunlap. Matt Evans, who Ooh. we don't usually expect this low. And Robert Piat still trying to recover from Yuma. In our bottom five, Alex Hawkins, Colin Bartell, Alex DeMarco, Carson Bechtel, and Matt Duell. It's going to be a tough season for the rest of these guys. Hopefully they can get it back and maybe make it's out. It's still early, but yeah. I think maybe Duell, Bechtel, and DeMarco might not have as much of a chance. So this does it for this race. Next week we're going to be heading to Paparone in Italy. It should be good. I can't wait for some pizza. That's horribly racist. And we'll see you next time for the Utica Rallycross Series. Peace out!